Hello, Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020forum.com. In today's video, I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you could develop a heart attack or a stroke. After I've given you the reasons in this video, I'm going to give you a brief explanation as to the anatomy and the pathophysiology of how heart attacks and strokes come about. So uh, it promises to be exciting. And by the way, uh, the reason for this video is that you become aware of these reasons and you can do something about them. So without further ado, let's get started. Here are 10 reasons why your arteries may get clogged up, leading to heart disease, heart attacks, and strokes. Reason number one, low vitamin K levels. Vitamin K is important in the health of your arteries. Studies have shown that vitamin K in particular, vitamin K2 does prevent calcifications in the arteries. Therefore, low levels of vitamin K is a punch on your arteries that is easily preventable. Reason number two why your arteries may get clogged up. Low free testosterone. A low level of free testosterone puts you at risk of having calcium deposits in your arteries. In particular, the coronary arteries supplying blood and nutrients to your heart and the carotid arteries supplying blood and nutrients to your brain. The fact that low free testosterone can cause calcification in your arteries is supported by studies. Reason number three, why your arteries may get clogged up. Excess triglycerides. We tend not to talk much about triglycerides, but these fats are just as bad, if not worse, than cholesterol in terms of how unfriendly they are to our arteries. High triglycerides contribute to hardening and thickening of our arteries you need to watch your triglycerides very closely. Reason number four, why your arteries may get clogged up. Excess homocysteine. High homocysteine level is associated with heart disease and strokes. High homocysteine levels in the blood can damage the lining of the arteries. High levels of homocysteine may also make the blood clot more easily than it should. This increases your risk of blood vessel blockages leading to strokes and heart attacks. A common cause of excess homocysteine level is vitamin B12 deficiency. Reason number five why your arteries may get clogged up is excess cholesterol. While some people in our society remain in denial about the role of cholesterol and heart disease because of their dietary preference, let it be known to you that cholesterol is a necessary ingredient in the inflammation that leads to hardening of your arteries. Please do not get dragged into their belief system. High cholesterol is bad for your heart and is bad for your brain health. Reason number six, why your arteries may get clogged up. High oxidized LDL. People with coronary artery disease have high levels of oxidized LDL. And this is an independent risk factor in heart disease. Oxidized LDL is a product of inflammation. Lifestyle habits like smoking that promote Free radicals cause inflammation leading to high oxidized LDL. Reason number seven, excess insulin. We need insulin to survive, but we don't need a huge amount. Excess insulin levels occur in insulin resistance. This happens in pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Insulin resistance causes the release of free fatty acids into the blood circulation. The liver can
cannot deal with the huge fatty acid load, leaving a lot of free fatty acids in the blood circulation. These free fatty acids in the blood circulation cause hardening of the arteries and over time leads to heart disease. Reason number eight, excess glucose. A diet high in sugar will ultimately result in insulin resistance. Insulin resistance causes high glucose levels. High circulating glucose in the blood leads to heart disease through the mechanism of insulin resistance and inflammation. Reason number nine why your arteries may get clogged up. High blood pressure. People with high blood pressure are more likely to develop heart disease and strokes. High blood pressure puts added force against the walls of your arteries. Over time, this extra pressure can damage the arteries, making them more vulnerable to the narrowing and plaque buildup, causing hardening of your arteries. Reason number 10 why your arteries may get clogged up. Physical inactivity. Being physically inactive can lead to fatty material building up in your arteries. We also know that sedentary lifestyle causes high blood pressure. If the arteries that carry blood to your heart and brain get damaged and clogged, it can lead to heart attack and strokes. The good news is this is a modifiable risk factor within your control. So now let's talk about the anatomy and the basic pathophysiology of how heart attacks and strokes come about. So uh, here is a graphical uh, representation of an artery. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a clean artery. Okay, the walls are completely free of plaques. There are no plaques on the wall of the artery. And the lumen uh, is also free, which means blood can flow through the lumen of the artery completely unhindered. Okay? So you compare that to uh, this one here. Okay? Look at the wall here. This has got a plaque on it. All right? Now, if the insult that led to this plaque buildup continues, then what's going to happen eventually is you're going to have more plaque developing circumferentially around uh, this artery and uh, the as, as of this moment the lumen is partially obstructed now if that insult continues and you have a continuous plaque buildup which is what you expect if the insult continues unabated then uh, this plaque will continue to build up and then you have a complete obstruction okay complete obstruction so um your arteries, they are your lifeline, uh, literally, they are your lifeline, so you've got to look after them. And they receive blood from the heart. So let's move on to the heart, okay? The heart is the pumping station. So let's move on to the heart. So here we have the heart, okay? And uh, the, the heart muscle is here, and you've got the vessels coming out of uh, the chambers of, of the heart. So the heart muscle itself has to receive oxygen and nutrients okay it's got to receive oxygen supply and nutrients and the vessels that supply the oxygen and the nutrients of the heart muscle are called coronary arteries okay so you've got the coronary uh, arteries here these red ones these are the coronary arteries so they are the ones supplying blood to the heart muscle because the heart muscle needs nutrients needs oxygen for it to do its job properly and uh, so if what happens here, okay, this plaque buildup happens in any of these coronary vessels, okay, if it happens in any of these coronary arteries, then you could have a complete obstruction, like I said earlier on, okay, when you have a complete obstruction, then the area that is supplied beyond that point of obstruction uh, will be deprived of oxygen and then it will die, okay, and when that happens, that is what we call a heart attack. Yes, that's what we call a heart attack. Okay, so if there's an obstruction at this level, then this area that is supplied by this 
uh, vessel here uh, will die because of oxygen deprivation. So that's the heart there. If that happens in the vessels of the brain, that part of the brain that is supplied by that artery will also be starved of oxygen and it will die off. And that's what we call a stroke. Okay? So when we talk about heart attacks and strokes, this is what we mean. Okay? You, it all starts with plaque buildup, uh, the vessel getting obstructed, either by plaque or sometimes a blood clot. Uh, if that happens to the heart muscle, you have a heart attack. If that happens to uh, the vessel supplying part of the brain, the artery supplying the brain, you end up with a stroke. So now we're up to speed with uh, heart attacks and stroke. Now, what do we mean by cardiovascular disease? Where well, cardiovascular disease refers to disease affecting the heart, cardio, heart, and blood vessels, vascular, okay? So cardiovascular disease refers to disease of the heart and blood vessels. So good. Now that we have a basic understanding of the anatomy and the pathophysiology of how heart attacks and strokes come about, the next question is what should you do next? Well, the reason I actually shot this video is because I want you guys to get tested for all of those things that I mentioned in the uh, video earlier on. Uh, indeed, all of them can be tested for apart from uh, things like physical inactivity, which you can easily self-diagnose. Um, so, and I also know that, yes, some of those tests may not be available in every neighborhood, but the ones that are available where you are, see your doctor to get tested for them so that you can rectify the problem, okay? That's the reason behind this video. Talking about physical inactivity, those of you uh, who are participating in the 30-day challenge, uh, you know, the 30-day challenge for heart health, uh, well done. You are 21 days into it now. Well done, very well done. And uh, keep going, I'm rooting for you. You got nine days to go. And hopefully, uh, after the 30 days are over, then of course, uh, you can now get into really getting active going forward. That was the whole idea behind the challenge. So well done for participating and well done for coming this far. Uh, so uh, hopefully you got some value from this video. If you did, uh, please give the video a thumbs up, please like the video, and also please share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. Uh, if you're participating in the 30 day challenge, let me know how you, well you're doing, okay? Are you racking up those steps, racking up those reps? Uh, let me know how well you're doing in the comments below. And also, I, I know that some of the, 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 the risk factors that I mentioned in the video, uh, you need to get tested for them, but just by superficially looking at all of those uh, uh, reasons that I mentioned, uh, how many do you think may apply to you? Do you think uh, three or more may apply to you? Uh, if that's the case, also please do let me know in the comment section. Right, so there should be two videos on your screen now. Go ahead and uh, click to watch any of those two videos. And uh, if you haven't joined us yet at the 2020 Forum platform, go ahead and join us there. Uh, I think that's about it uh, in this video. Uh, until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.